from the band, no. There was no inkling at all, whatsoever. Um, you know, that's still a mystery today. It was terrible what happened to him. You know, you know, you, I mean, poor Pete, to be told on the brink of the first recording that you're out. Now, there have been so many excuses, but so we've had no actual reason as to why Peter should leave. But as I say, success mm. is hard to come by, and these things do happen. But it's just the way that it was done that has annoyed us. What did, what did I say, man? Well, you know, the drummer wasn't too good, the beat wasn't so hot. You know. The reason I was given, I wasn't a good enough drummer. <laughs> People who saw me play then and people who've seen me play since then have turned around and said, no, that wasn't the decision. If you listen to his early drummer or hear any of his stuff, he's just as adequate a drummer as Ringo, if not better. Then that, that opens up the enclave into what the decision was. And then you got all the other bits, jealousy, hairstyle, blah, 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 goes on. Um, so I suppose the biggest myth is, right, that not, influ not influencing it, it's a public decision, that's why I turn around and say, right, I'm not a bad drummer, okay? Let the people make their own mind up about that. I think maybe the drumming was used as an excuse to get rid of him. Unfairly. Clash of personalities, well, probably that may be it, because if Peter was, uh, did have a terrific fan club, you know, yeah. compared to the others. It's too so, good looking, perhaps, eh? Well, I'll leave that for the other people to say, but if it had done, been done a bit more straightforward, it would have been more to the mark. We had a lot of trouble with Pete's mother, uh, Mona Best. She was constantly ringing up Brian Epstein and saying, what are you going to do for Pete's band? And Brian Epstein didn't like that at all. Brian phoned me and said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to let the band go. He said, uh, maybe you'd be interested. I said, why? He said, I can't get over Mrs. Best. He said, she's just, you know, overpowering. So we had discussed that it might be better to get rid of Mrs. Best by getting rid of Pete. It's a bit like that uh, Agatha Christie book, Murder on, on the Orange Express, where all these people have different grudges against this person. All the people involved around Pete Best had a reason for wanting Pete Best to leave the band. He looked great, and he was a great drummer, a lovely man. But he just was not, didn't have the same humour as the other three, or the same way of life. You can't change your personality. Pete's very quiet. You know, I liked Pete, but... Um... It was different, and that probably didn't work too well when you're away a long time together and stuck together. We'd drive back from Newcastle and he'd go home, but we'd still go finish the night off somewhere. You know. The other three were so outgoing and I think they needed somebody outgoing. Mm. I see the Beatles as being essentially pragmatic. Once they'd been grounded and focused by Epstein, they had a collective ambition and anything that stood in the way of that ambition would be sacrificed, and I'm afraid I think Peter, Pete Best was. But uh, the way I look at it, you know, just let it lie now. Except well, for the reports in the papers, and I, you know, it gets me a bit niggled at times. I mean, what is interesting is, is that the Mersey beat that comes out um, following Pete Best's sacking says that Pete Best left the band by mutual agreement. I think Bill Harry was fed that by Brian Epstein as a press release, and it was obviously completely wrong. When Pete was fired, I mean, there was a huge outcry amongst the fan club. It was taboo, it was really upsetting people. Uh, nobody wanted Pete to leave the Beatles. The reaction from people in Liverpool was absolutely incredible. There was demonstrations, a, a march to the city, bring back Pete. You know, there were riots in Matthew Street, posters, Ringo never, Pete forever. And George got punched in the face. There was a lot of trouble. Even Ringo Starr was threatened. I used to be good mates with Ringo. You know, before the replacement took place. We're still mates now, like. But I haven't seen him to have a chat with him or anything like that. It was very heartwarming for myself, um, seeing the support I had. Um, but deep down inside, I knew that the decision had been made, you know. And regardless of what happened, you know, the door wasn't going to be opened again.
Ringo had played with the Beatles on occasions when Pete Best had been ill, so they knew they could get on well with him. He fitted into the band more perfectly as a person now, I think. He tried to fit in. Be city chatting and having a, a toasted cheese sandwich and a scotch and coke, you know. And we, we, everyone became very fond of him. I would class Ringo as the happy Beatle. You know, he was always dancing and singing along with different songs or humming a song, you know. I've always said Ringo was a very lucky person. And I was sitting here in this room one night with Paul McCartney. And I said, there's one lucky person, isn't there, Paul? And he said, don't go down there, Joe. He said, leave him alone. Ringo had a, a pretty sad childhood. In the early 1990s, he was back in Liverpool and he was remembering the places that he, he knew in Liverpool. And invariably, he goes to hospitals. Did you enjoy your stay in hospital? Oh, it was nice, thanks. How, How, did, you get on? How did you get on with the nurses? Not so bad, you know. Very nice nurses. Were, you a, model, were you a model patient? You've got to ask the nurses about that. <laughs> what did you dislike about being in hospital? Um, uh, nothing really, because I had to go in, so you know, I just sort of settled down and read and played records and got used to it again. He was in hospital so many times, and not at school, that the kids used to call him Lazarus. At the end of school, you had to have a, a signed report saying, you know, you've been a student at the school, and the teachers didn't even know who he was. I knew his mum and his stepdad. They, Elsie was lovely, she'd always give you a cup of tea. Mrs Bravestocky, does Ringo want to move house? I don't really think so. He's asked us to have another house, but we're quite happy. Has Ringo suggested you should stop work as a Liverpool Corporation painter? He certainly has, but I don't want to move. I like my job and I like the people I work with. Ringo, he was like the final piece in the jigsaw, you know, the, of Beetledom. It's that indefinable element, you just know when something works and something doesn't. And in particular with music, where it is so much to do with feel and instinct, that's very important.